Hi, my name is Dan with ENS Security, and today I'm going to show you how to do the IP configuration on the Diamond Series products for the cameras and also for the NVR. And now I'm going to show you how to set up the IP network configuration of the camera itself through the web interface. Now keep in mind that when you open up a box of the camera, you're going to see this little quick start guide. You're going to note in the quick start guide that there's going to be the default IP address of the camera itself. And typically it's going to be 192.168.1.108 for the Diamond Series products. Okay? So you're going to want to make a note of that. Once you get that information, you're going to connect the camera to a switch, okay, and then connect your computer to the same network switch because they have to be in the same network segment. In order for them to communicate, you're going to have to make sure that your computer is going to be in the same network segment as the camera, okay? And how you verify that is first you're going to go into your uh, network settings here in the computer. Typically there's going to be a network icon, okay, so you're going to locate that right click and then you're going to click on open network and internet settings then you're going to click on where it says change adapter options okay typically you're going to see an ethernet adapter icon so once you see that you're going to right click on it and then you're going to go ahead and click on properties and then you're going to locate where it says internet protocol version 4 okay click on that and then you're going to click on properties now, there's going to be a couple ways you can actually set the IP address of the computer. Uh, one is through obtain IP address automatically, which means DHCP, allowing the router to assign the IP address. But the issue with that is sometimes um, the network that the computer is on might not necessarily fall into the same network segment as the camera's default IP address. For example, it could be a 10 network. So if that's the case, then what you can do is manually change the IP address of the computer to match the segment, which I'm going to show you right now. So if that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on use the following IP address, okay? Now note earlier from the notes uh, in the quick start guide, the default IP address of the camera ends in 108. So I'm going to set my computer to a different IP address but within the same network segment. So I'm going to example put in 192.168.1 and let's say like 109. And this is going to be important to know because sometimes, you know, if our tech support team is not available to help you do IP configuration, uh, you're going to at least know how to do it yourself, okay? Your subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0 and your gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1. Once you do that, you're going to click OK, exit out of here. Sometimes it takes a moment. Okay, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to verify that my uh, computer is in the same IP address that I just changed it to. So what you're going to do at the prompt here, you're going to type in IP config forward slash ALL and then hit enter. And then just verify that the IP address is changed to what you want. So as you can see from this bulk of IP address information, it does say 192.168.1.109, which is good. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ping the IP address of the camera from the computer, meaning it's going to send out a signal. If I get a reply back from it, then that means there's communication between the two devices. Therefore, we can move to the next step. If it doesn't show, then you want to check your network settings again or maybe check the network cable. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit ping, P-I-N-G, space, and then the IP address of the camera, which is the 192.168.1.108. Hit enter. As you can see here, there's a reply back from in milliseconds. So that's the signal that you want to verify. If it does say things like request timed out, then maybe you might want to check the, the switch port, the cable, the camera itself, or maybe uh, readjust the IP address uh, of the, the camera, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the computer, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Internet Explorer browser, okay? And then of course, make sure your ActiveX settings are enabled first. And then here, again, as you can see here, I'm going to type in the IP address of the camera in the URL here. And if all goes up well, I should be able to hit the login page of the camera itself. So we'll just wait momentarily here. And if it doesn't work, then let's go ahead and do this. Click on the internet gear icon here. Go to internet options. And then what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to go into where it says general. And then I'm going to go ahead and where it says browsing history, I'm going to delete, click delete, and then I'm going to clear out the cookies and the website data. Okay? Apply that, OK it, and then close the browser, reopen it again. Okay. 
and then I'm gonna ahead and try to type in the IP address of the camera again. And it's also good to note these steps because sometimes you can't expect you know, everything to run smoothly the first time, so these are just little you know, uh, situations that you may encounter, okay? Okay, now you see that uh, we get into the web page, so I'm gonna hit allow. Okay, now because this is a brand new camera out of the box, it's gonna ask you to initialize it first. So anytime that you're doing it through the web browser, it's gonna ask you to uh, adjust a few settings first. So the region, so based on what country you're from, so we're in the United States, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and we can, until we can locate that. Okay, so now I can see where it says United States highlight that. Of course, the uh, language is going to be uh, what you prefer, but we're here in the U.S., so we're going to select English. Video standard, we're in the U.S., so we're going to use uh, NTSC and hit Next. And then, of course, you're going to want to adjust the date and time settings, of course, because uh, that helps you um, when you do the playback and the live footage, you have a right time for reference, okay? Uh, one of the things I can do is make sure I can sync it with the computer that I'm on if it's set correctly. And then, of course, make sure that your time zone is also in the correct time zone that you're in based on what state you're in. And hit Next. Okay, now it's going to ask me to create a password. Just keep in mind this is called initialization, okay? So if you don't set a password, you're not going to be able to log into the camera. The older versions of the, uh, the Diamond series had a default password, but because of the security, enhanced security, it's making you create a password, which is a good thing, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, if you want to put an email in there as well, in case you forget your password, that's fine too. Or keep in mind that the camera itself usually has a reset button somewhere on the unit, okay, in case you forget that. So in this case, I'm not going to put an email address. I'm just going to go and create a password. Uh, you typically want to create a password where it's from a middle to strong level, okay, not a weak level because it's easy for people to just kind of guess it, okay. Same thing if you're going to set a password for a computer or any of your electronic devices. So this password is an example I'm going to set to something like Q123456767. Okay, that's a middle strength password. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that password again. Q123456767. Okay, and then I'm going to hit next. Okay, so it says device initialization complete. I'm going to uncheck that option. Then skip that part. Don't need to really check for auto updates because we usually have the latest firmware. If you don't have the latest firmware, you can always call in to our ENS tech support team. We can always verify that for you, okay? So the username is gonna be admin, lowercase by default, and then I'm gonna put in my password, which is the lowercase Q, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hit login. Okay, and then once you're logged into the uh, interface of the camera, you can go to settings, and then I'm gonna go straight to network and then I'm gonna to go to TCP IP, okay? Now here, as you can see, it's set to static, which is what we confirmed earlier from the quick guide. The default IP address is 192.168.1.108, along with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, or in the gateway of the 192.168.1.1, okay? So that was, that's why it was important to set the computer's IP address to match the network segment, otherwise they're not gonna be able to communicate, okay? Now, a couple of ways to set the IP address, if this unit is connected to the network, uh, you can select DHCP, which is allowing the, uh, the router or the modem to assign an IP address uh, to the camera itself. That's fine. However, sometimes, uh, you know, they may not have a router or modem available. They just want you to set an IP address. So if that's the case, you just can keep it as static uh, and then just manually change the IP address to match the network settings of the uh, DVR or the NVR that you're going to um, set it to. Uh, good practice is to always, you know, have a piece of paper and then just write down the IP addresses of the NVR and the cameras. That way, when you set the IP addresses or make a list of them, they don't conflict with each other, okay? Now, keep in mind that if you are on a network and you want to manually assign an IP address, you don't know how to, you know, what's being taken, a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, number one, you can actually log into the web browser of the gateway or the router Usually that will require credentials, but that's not always possible. You can log in, find out what the wired and wireless network devices attached to it are, and then note the IP addresses that are being used, and then just choose something within that segment that's not being used, okay? That's a long way of doing it. Or one thing you can do is just go ahead and uh, open up the command prompt. In this little uh, prompt here, you can type in the little command here, ARP space dash A, hit enter, 
And then here you're gonna note a list of IP addresses on the device, I mean on the network, okay? And then you're gonna go through that and then that way you can already tell what IP addresses are being used and then make a note of that and then just select one that's within that segment that's not being used, okay? And once you do that, just go ahead and manually type in an IP address, hit save, and then go ahead and once you verify that, open up the command prompt, ping the IP address again, and if you have communication, it already communicates with it. And then that's how you do it through the web browser. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the IP configuration of the camera through the Diamond Series config tool, okay? So you wanna to go to our ENS security website under support and go to tools and then look for config tool and download it onto your PC. Once you download it, you're gonna open it up and it's gonna look like this, okay? And then you're gonna do the uh, refresh and then you're gonna note whatever devices of the Diamond Series products that you have on that same network as a PC, it's gonna show up. It's either gonna say initialized or uninitialized. In this example, this is a brand new camera, so this example here, it's gonna say uninitialized. So before you can actually log into the camera to adjust settings or anything like that, you need to initialize it, which is, you know, create a password. So once I locate that, and sometimes just keep in mind that um, you're gonna notice a MAC address on the list here, right? So if you have a lot of devices and you're not sure which one is which, usually on the unit itself, the camera, on the sticker label, there's gonna be a MAC address so you can know which one is which on the software itself, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and check the box here and then click initialize, okay? And then once I click it, it's gonna ask me to create a new password, okay? Again, weak, medium, strong. I'm gonna use the same password as the previous example, Q123456767. Confirm the password by putting it in again, Q123456767, okay? And then I'm not gonna put an email address, I'm just gonna select NTSC, hit next. Don't need to check these, I'm just gonna click okay. And then once it's initialized, it's gonna show that. So as you can see earlier, it had a little green check, okay? So now you note that here, it says initialized, okay? Then to do further uh, configurations, I'm gonna go to search settings, verify my password is the same, so I'm gonna put in the Q, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hit okay. And then if I wanna check details, a couple of ways I can do this. Uh, if I wanna go ahead and check information of the camera like serial number, MAC address, the current IP address, this is where I go. And then if I wanna edit an IP address, note here there's two different options. There's DHCP or there's static. Uh, typically static is more of the preferred method because then you can choose which IP address you want. So if I wanna choose this to something different, then let's say I wanna change it to, let's say like 110. I'll just go ahead and modify it, put the IP address as 110 or whatever network segment that the system is on, okay? Once I click OK, I'm going to refresh, and if all goes well, it's going to show the new IP address on the, uh, the software here. As you can see, it says 110. So that means if I'm going to log into it through the web browser, I have to type in that new IP address as opposed to the old IP address, okay? So I'm going to click web here, and then now you note that the IP address shows 110, and I can just go ahead and log in, and that's how you do it. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the IP configuration on the recorder side. The easiest way is to attach a monitor to it and to log into the interface. Now, one thing I wanna mention is sometimes if a monitor is not available, you can still attach the DVR or the NVR to a network switch and to a computer and then do the same IP configuration through the web browser or through the uh, config tool. Now remember, in the box of the NVR or the DVR recorder, there's a quick guide that also states the default IP address of the unit itself, which is the same as the camera, 192.168.1.108 by default, okay? So now, once you have the monitor attached, then you're gonna see this interface here. So you're gonna start to uh, do the configurations by starting with what region you're in, okay? So we're gonna look for the United States. Then, of course, the language is gonna be English or whatever language that you prefer. And then the video standard is gonna be based on where you're from, so we're in the US, so it's gonna be naturally NTSC. I'm gonna hit next, and then of course make sure that the time zone and the system time is correct, so you're gonna go through it, or you can set that later. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the password for the recorder, okay? So I'm gonna use the same one I used in the camera example, Q1 through seven, or Q1234567, enter and then confirm it by putting it in again. 
and then password hint, I can just put something that I usually use. So the password uh, is typically what we used to use for RMA. So that's gonna be my hint and then hit next. And then you can also draw an unlock pattern too. Uh, it's just a pattern without having to uh, input a password. That's optional. So I'm gonna skip this for now. And then for the uh, security questions, you can also enable that if you want, or you can skip that if you know the password. Auto updates, I'm just gonna bypass that for now. Next, 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 and finish initializing. And then what I'm gonna do now is gonna right click, go into the main menu, and then go to where it says network, okay? The network here, you'll see that where's TCP IP at the top, you're gonna click on modify, okay? So again, the recorder, like the camera by default, is set to uh, static, right? So if you want to change it manually, you just go ahead where it says IP address, you can change it to something different. So for example, I'll use the same IP address I used for the camera example, 110, or you can change it to whatever network segment that you're on, and then uh, change the gateway and the subnet mask as well, and then hit OK, and then that will change the IP address. Now you see up here, the IP address has changed to what I changed it to. The other option is to go do the uh, DHCP. So that means if you're connected to a network, then when you select DHCP, you're allowing the router or the modem to assign an IP address to the recorder itself. Once you verify that, hit OK. And if all goes smoothly, then you should note that the default IP address 108 should change to something different. And that's how you do it. And that concludes our tutorial on how to set up the IP configuration for the Diamond Series cameras and for the recorder. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notified of future videos. Once again, thank you for watching.